Now some manufacturers like Ducati build bikes for the track and then produce a road going version. The Japanese on the other hand tend to do it the other way around and produce a road bike and then develop it further by taking it racing. Aprilia, for example, build their sports bikes on experience and have plenty of it. They spent years and fortunes racing in the GP paddocks around the world and have come up with bikes like this one, the Aprilia RS125. It's a perfect example and it's the nearest thing you'll find to a 125 GP bike out there on the road. It's a fine looking specimen, isn't it? However, clever Aprilia long ago noted that youngsters held a keen interest in race replicas which were potentially accessible to them, being learn illegal, low on capacity and horsepower. And parked up outside the corner shop, the little Aprilia possesses those movie star looks and it's only when you slip the key in the ignition that people aren't quite so impressed. Now in restricted form, the RS125 sounds and feels fairly flat. In fact, you have to... You have to rev the nuts off the little blighter just to stop it stalling. Especially when you're at the traffic light. But saying that when you are at the lights, if you like a full-on race-style start, then this is certainly going to put a grin on your face and really cheese off the bus driver. On de-restricted form, the whole moving issues become somewhat easier. From the moment you thumb the electric start button, which is something you don't take for granted on the small two-stroke Sportster, you can hear the motor breathing freely as the revs climb with far more enthusiasm than the restricted version. Revs up, the smell of two-stroke around you and there's no way you can behave. These bikes throw you into a false sense of security. With little change in the sound of the motor, you continue to wring the little bugger's neck. And before you know it, you're moving off at a fair old pace. Thank God for the fruity 32mm front brake, accompanied by a chunky four-piston caliper. A bike that weighs in at around 140 kilos proves little challenge for that Brembo setup. Now, this is where the bike really scores points in the handling department. Nothing you can throw at it will prove too much. Their lack of weight allows you to quickly flick them from side to side, but once over in a corner, the bike remains stable and beautifully balanced. But at around £3,800, these bikes are a long way from value for money. But unlike the Saks, the little RS responds well to tuning. Fully de-restricted, it already kicks out more than double the power of the Saks, and there's plenty room for more. Beware. Now, in restricted form, this bike's performance is reasonably average, but it's one of those bikes where the more you put in, the more you get out. Now, in de-restricted form, it's a different story. It still can be quite hard work, but you get it on those twisties and it will be in its element. But I tell you what, your right wrist might ache a little bit from keeping those revs up. Overall, I think it deserves seven out of 10. And so on to value for money. Well, I'm afraid the RS125 doesn't fare very well in that category. It's priced at around £3,800 for a new one. And if you're a youngster just starting out on a bike, you probably haven't got that sort of money to splash around. And if you are older and have passed your test, I mean, let's face it, half the fun of this bike is being able to de-restrict that. And you won't be able to do it if you've not passed your test. So, I'm sorry, but it looks like six out of 10. As for build quality, well, that's a different story. The RS comprises of high quality components and is fashioned in a way only the Italians know how. You know, this frame and this swing arm, they belong in a museum. And for that, it turns itself eight out of 10. And as for the comfort factor, personally, I love it. The seat's well padded. It's a nice, comfortable stretch to the handlebars. I'm not overstretched. The tank not only looks beautiful, but it's very well sculptured and the legs fit nicely underneath the tank there, rest easily on the foot pegs. Just overall, it's just so comfortable to use. The clutch is easy, the gear lever, everything falls into place just as it should. And for that, I'm gonna give it nine out of 10. Now let's talk street clothes, shall we? If you're 16 years of old, there's nothing better out there on the road. But if you're from an older generation of bikers, it might be a bit of a different story. You may be embarrassed firing up a small-hearted bike that looks as if it can really talk the talk. Do you know what it reminds me of? It's a sheep in wolf's clothing. 
but it looks the biz, and for that, we'll give it 8 out of 10.